Welcome, Namaste and welcome to Dr. Shah's Clinic. In this video, we are going to look at low sperm count causes, its symptoms, classification, diagnosis and low sperm count treatment. Right, so an individual is said to be diagnosed with low sperm count or oligozoospermia. You know, that's the medical jargon for low sperm count. If his sperm concentration is less than 15 million per ml of semen. So here, if you look at the image on the right, you know, under the microscopic high power field, if we count more than 15 or 15 sperms per high HPF, also called as high power field, the individual is said to have a count of 15 million per ml or a count greater than 15 million per ml. But if the if you but if the if the number of spermatozoa as seen in the high power field is less than this number, if there are say only one or two spermatozoa, if there are five to six sperms, or if there are about eight, nine, or ten sperms then these individuals are said to, said to have low sperm count problems, also called as oligozoospermia. What's very important to understand here, and this is, a, this is a pro tip, right, is that just because you get one same analysis report that shows low sperm count, it does not mean, it does not mean that you're strictly a patient of oligozoospermia. And let me tell you why. If you take a single fertile father, right, and if you test his sperm test, if you do a sperm test on him for over 120 days, you know, at different periods of time. In the, they did this experiment and they reported the findings in the WHO 2010 manual. Look at the image on the right. They took a single man's semen and tested it over 120 days at, at different times. And what they found was even for a single fertile father, the count can vary from zero all the way to 120 million. That's the pro tip here. So what's important to understand is that just because you get one semen analysis report with less than 15 million per ml, it does not mean you have, you have a low sperm count issue or your oligosperm. So please, please don't get panicked. Please go to another laboratory and recheck your semen analysis. And if that sperm, semen, semen report or sperm test comes out to be normal, and most likely it will, it means you don't have a low sperm count issue. So for all patients you know who come to our clinic, what we tend to do is regardless of what report, semen test report they may have from outside, when they come back here, we recheck the semen analysis and surprise, surprise, in almost 50 to 60 percent of the time, we find that the sperm count is more than 15 million per ml and they are actually truly not suffering from low sperm count issues. So this is what this phenomenon that we see is actually called natural variation in semen parameters, right? Even for a healthy individual, sperm count can sometimes go low and sometimes come back to normal and that's complete normal. But when will we diagnose a patient with less low sperm count? Okay, so patient has come to the clinic, right? And the patient did a report outside. We do a report here again and we do it once more. So two to three times we tested the patient with a semen analysis. And in all the two or three reports, if we find the count is less than 15 million per ml, then we diagnose the patient to have oligozoospermia. And not just that, there are different categories of oligozoospermia. So there's mild oligozoospermia, there's moderate oligozoospermia, and there is severe oligosuspermia. So say if the count under the microscope or under the high power field shows only one or two sperms, you know, uh, uh, per field, or if the count is anywhere from say, occasional motile cell seen to about one million or maybe two million or three million, or maybe up to five million, these patients all have what's called as severe oligosuspermia. So in general counts that are less than five million per ml, patients are said to have severe oligosuspermia. In individuals who have counts from say 5 to 10 million per ml, the patient is said to have a moderate oligosuspermia or moderate low sperm count issues, right? So in patients who have count between 10 to 15 million per ml, it's a mild, you know, oligosuspermia. So up depending on the diagnosis, we have to treat the patient. There's another condition called cryptosuspermia. So in patients who are cryptosuspermic, basically what we have to do is take the semen sample and put it under the microscope. We will not see sperms there under the raw need. The need sample won't show sperms. But when we centrifuge the sample, there may be one or two sperms seen in the pellet. When we look at the pellet, so these patients are said to have cryptozoospermia. Right. So these are. This is how we classify an individual with low sperm count issues. We classify the individual into severe, moderate, as well as mild uh, oligosuspermia. Then, what are the symptoms of low sperm count? Now, remember. For most patients, when an individual come, for most patients who come to a fertility clinic, most of the time there is no symptoms. However, some patients with low sperm count will have decreased libido, decreased sexual interest, de decreased ability to sustain an erection. 
they will some patients will also note a decrease in the ejaculate volume in some patients the androgenization that is the male pattern of hair distribution will not be there in the sense they will not have an adequate beard growth they will not have an adequate mustache or a beard growth you know they will be obese they will be tall they will have a female type body habitus they'll have more abdominal fat testicular size may be very very small hair growth will be diminished decreased and signs of androgenization usually point to you know low sperm count problems are almost some in some individuals it can be even more severe sperm count may not be seen at all and that's a condition called azoospermia i'll make a separate video on it so these are all the you know common symptoms you know of individuals who have low sperm count issues okay now in the next part of the now in the next uh, now next we are going to discuss on what are the causes of low sperm count so the causes of low sperm count can be can be categorized as you know lifestyle causes of low sperm count issues number 1 number 2 environmental causes of low sperm count issues number 3 medical causes of low sperm count issues so let's look at lifestyle factors causes now an individual you know if the lifestyle causes of low sperm count issues are usually related to disturbed sleep wake cycles number 1 number 2 cigarette smoking alcohol intake number 3 use of you know recreational drugs number 4 unhealthy lifestyle practices lack of physical activity you know you are sitting with a laptop on the lap or you know keeping the phone always in the pant pocket because then the testis is exposed to emr radiation which can you know destroy your sperm to zoa in terms of both count as well as motility so these are some you know lifestyle factors that can you know cause low sperm count and even even taking bath you know in a hot shower sitting in a hot tub hot tub bath you know exposing the testis to constant heat all the time this can all lead to can all affect an individual's sperm count so these are all causes of low sperm count from a lifestyle perspective now what are the environmental causes right so excessive pollution exposure to pollution toxins radiation exposure heat exposure to occupational exposure to heat so bakers welders arc welders uh, people you know who work with heavy industry heavy machinery who are constantly exposed to heat uh, you know technicians who work uh, you know with x rays and radiation based equipment uh, people who, uh, who you know kind of live close to you know atomic power stations nuclear power stations you know people who live in the vicinity you know they are always going to be you know exposed to some low level of radiation these are all you know kind of occupational factors that can actually lead to low sperm count problems now let's look at the medical causes of low sperm count the medical causes of low sperm count are numerous and you know the common causes are what we see in the clinic first common cause is usually called hypogonadotropic hypogonadism right in this condition this is a hormonal condition where you know there's not adequate fsh and lh being produced in the brain of the individual and because of that sperm production does not take place and that's one cause of low sperm count in some individuals there is hypergonadotropic hypogonadism so hypergonadotropic means what there is excessive fsh there is excessive lh so this is an end organ problem basically what's happening fsh and lh is produced in the brain both these hormones are required for sperm production but in hypergonadotropic hypogonadism the testis is itself faulty right so the testis is not going to take the fsh and lh in and sperm production is as a result not going to happen so that's another condition some individuals have what's called as klinefelter syndrome and klinefelter syndrome is technically a genetic problem which comes under hypergonadotropic hypogonadism some individuals have klinefelter mosaics that means half the cells in their body will have um, a normal you know chromosome uh, uh, a normal set of chromosomes the additional chromosome will be seen in the remaining half cells of the body so it's a genetic problem and as this big and as a result of that it's called 47 xx virus an additional x chromosome because of the additional x chromosomes pump production gets impaired and for these klinefelter mosaics paternity is you know usually uh, almost impossible then undescended testis in some individuals sperm count may be present because one testicle has not even descend into the sac has not descended properly there's only one testis in the sac in, in the sac and that one descended testis may not be functioning properly so that's one cause of low sperm count then you know y chromosome microdeletion this is a genetic condition where in the y chromosome the long arm of the y chromosome there are genes called as the a0 of a b and c genes deletion of these genes can also also lead to low sperm count and many of these men will be sexually very very normal you know the sexual function will be completely normal but still when you do a semen analysis the count will be very very low it will not respond to medical therapy in any way so y chromosome micro deletion is another cause of low sperm count apart from that other causes include sexually transmitted diseases you know in individuals who are in promiscuous relationship or who have been in many who have been in promiscuous relationship in the past you know they settle down with a married partner if they have stds if they have not been treated for stds in the past what basically happens is uh, you know infections like chlamydia and gonorrhea can basically obstruct the reproductive system 
there can be epidermal blockage and because of that the spermatozoa cannot actually come out and these individuals will have low sperm count uh, problems. Apart from that conditions like you know orchitis, testicular injury, you know uh, major injuries in childhood, unresolved injuries can also lead to low sperm count. Now interestingly we have seen another condition called hymosis. You know in hymosis, complete hymosis basically the patients have what's called as correction difficulties so that they will not be able to correct their complete semen sample when they come for a semen analysis. So hymosis is a condition where there is excessive foreskin covering the organ. So in these individuals also we tend to notice low sperm count problems and once we do a corrective procedure the sperm count the amount of semen that's deposited usually improves. So that's another reason for uh, low sperm count. Apart from that use of certain medications there are over uh, in fact studies have found almost close to 250 different medications from antibiotics uh, to anti-inflammatory drugs you know uh, uh, gastric medication you know, uh, you know the GRD medication on a range of medications and drugs almost 250 different molecules have been systematically researched and they have all found you know kind of impair the overall sperm count so when an individual comes to a clinic we kind of you know all, we, are, we ask almost about 50 to 100 questions you know to ascertain the cause of low sperm count so there are still many many more causes i don't want to go too deep into it now let's look at the you know the uh, low sperm count treatment options so basically low sperm count treatment options uh, you know are going to revolve around healthy lifestyle practices so the patient we have to optimize the patient's sleep wake cycle we should ensure the patient gets adequate exercise He's for, we should ensure that the patient gets a proper uh, a nutritious diet which is healthy and also good for his overall sperm production so we give a customized you know fertility chart that the patient should follow which is full of antioxidants rather than you know give medicines which costs you know thousands and thousands of rupees we put the patients on a customized male fertility chart which will help improve his sperm count apart from that we also you know correct all these problems if there's a hormonal deficit say this hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism hormonal therapy can usually restore sperm production completely back to normal so the medications that we give include FSH injection along with combined with HCG injections for improving the sperm count at least in individuals who are hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism. In some individuals you know we give letrozole therapy or therapy with anastrozole which are again different medications which can be used. So medical therapy is usually the first option so lifestyle with medical therapy is usually the first set of treatment options for individuals with low sperm count. If that does not work the next set of treatment options involve what's called as an IUI based treatment cycle where you know the motile sperm fraction is separated and inseminated clo close to the day of egg release and if IUI fails you know three cycles of IUI four cycles of IUI fails we have to recommend the patient to go for IVF or ICSI in IVF or ICSI basically what happens is a single sperm is selected and is injected into the egg to make an embryo the embryo is cultured for three to five days and then transferred into the female part so there are different treatment options available for low, low sperm count but ultimately the treatment options that we choose depends on what, what are the causative factors. So diagnosing the individual you know, properly with low sperm count issues is very 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 important and very very crucial. I hope you found this video informative. Please like, comment and subscribe. Share this video with all your friends and loved ones and drop in your comments below. If you have doubts you can reach out to me below in the description I have given you my contact number, my mail ID. Feel free to drop a mail. I will be happy to help you through your problem. This is Dr. Shah. Vanakam and Namaste.